Let's not take the other extreme. You're very successful. You go to college, you get all straight A's, you get um, hired by the top companies, you are making bridges all over the world, you've got your, your picture on the magazines, uh, civil engineering monthly, and everyone knows your name. Okay, so um, what happens to you now? I get paid. Okay, do you get paid a lot? Yeah. In fact, the sky's the limit. You can make enormous amounts of money. And in fact, in a lazy fair economy, taxes are very low. And you're still going to have some taxes. Don't think that just because it's lazy fair, you have no taxes at all. You still have some taxes. But what are the taxes for? The taxes are just making up more that people are safe. And that what you own, you get to own. And what you take it from. You gotta have basic police. You gotta have basic military. But other than that, right? You're free to keep almost all of your money. Um, do we have anyone that maybe, let's say, Jessica, you wanna be like, um, you wanna make, you wanna manufacture stuff. You wanna manufacture toys. You wanna have a big toy business. And let's say the toys that you make are really popular. You can become a multi multi millionaire, and then you're really not gonna touch much of that money, and you're very, you're regulating very, in a very small way. You can be much not at all. If you make a toy that goes up in into bases, what's going to happen? Well, in, in today's society, they can sue you, you're going to lose all of your money, yada, yada, and they have all of these rules about what kind of toys you can make. But in a lazy fairy society, they don't have any rules about that. So, what happens if you make a, a toy that goes up in into bases? Is anyone else, right? Is anyone else going to buy those toys? No. And so what happens is, instead of the government telling you what you can make and what you can't make, the market tells you what you can make and what you can't make by either buying your product or selling your product. If you make a good product, you can make tons and tons of money. If you make a product that blows up in its basis or a crappy product, you're going to make nothing. And it's not the government that tells you this, it's the market that tells you this. That's a lazy, fair economy. We're still going to get good products. It's not the government that's going to be telling us that you get good products. It's by people buying and selling these products that's going to tell us whether we get good products. You get to choose what you want to be when you grow up. You have ultimate choices. But if you suck at it, you're going to have to quickly find a new job because there's no government coming to help you out. If you're really good at it, the sky is the limit. In a lazy fair economy, what's the gap between rich and poor money? Very large because there's no government coming in to redistribute the resources. So you're going to have a lot of some really rich people and some really poor people. Any questions about what this may look like? Let's now go to so the country. Yeah, go ahead. So what would be an example of a country that has a living fair market? Okay, so I want you to think way back to your U.S. history class that you took last year. Can you think of a moment in American history where pretty much we were right there and the government really, other than very small amounts, really did not get involved much in the economy. Claire, do you remember? Well, like all the security stuff came out from the market, but it's like, what's the Okay, so the 1920s security is, is a fairly good example. It's an even better example. The, yeah, the Industrial Revolution, like the 1890s. You guys ever learned about like the rise of like the Gilded Age, yeah. the robber barons, the captains of industry, all of those guys. You get guys like Carnegie and Rockefeller that are just making huge amounts of money. And what are they doing to the workers? Yeah, yeah they're crapping on them. The workers have got have got nothing going on. And so, yeah, that will be an example of an economy that's a lazy, very economy. Some people think that's not a bad thing. Other people are really upset by it. Well, right, it's good to be, it's, in, in this economy, it's good to be rich. You know, in any economy, it's kind of good to be rich. Let's get to over here, and let's take a look at what a communist economy is. And I'm going to pick on Mark again. So Mark wants to be a civil engineer, and it just so happens that in a strictly state-run economy, you do not get to choose what you want to be when you grow up. They'll probably give you all these tests in high school to figure out what you're good at. And it just so happens that you're not very good at civil engineering. You're good at biology. And since the state controls the economy, the state's going to decide you're best as a doctor, not as an engineer. I don't care whether you like it or not, that's what the tests say you're good at. And so that's where we're going to get the biggest bang out of the buck from you. So you're going to go through medical school whether you like it or not. You're going to become a doctor whether you like it or not. And they have just chosen your life course for you because the state completely controls the economy. 
included what jobs people do. All right, let's continue. Let's say Paula now takes the same kind of test that you've been taking, and she is um, being told that she's in a factory and she has to make overhead pens because the economy needs overhead pens. Okay, now when you're in a factory, they will literally tell you that you have to only make black overhead pens. You don't even get to decide what kind of overhead pens you make. They tell you how many overhead pens you need to make a year. They tell you how many employees you have to hire. And they tell you what your pay is. How much you pay your employees. The government literally controls every aspect of the economy. And guess what? You make the same amount as the doctor over here. And you make the same amount as your workers who are going to get overhead pens. Because typically, in a command economy, under communism, you get equal distribution of all income and wealth. So everyone is making the same amount of money. You know, what do you guys think of that? Where, where might a problem with that be? That everyone makes the same amount of money? Doug? I don't want to be driven to do anything. Right, so there's a lack of incentive, right? This is the term, the economic term that we use. Right? If you make the same amount of money as someone who is um, making pens, and they make the same amount of money as someone who is the civil engineer, and they make the same amount of money as someone who's flipping burgers at McDonald's, what gives you the incentive to work really hard at school? To get good grades, to become better educated, to work hard at your job, to put in overtime, to think of that new invention. By the way, have any of you guys seen that new social networking movie? Yeah. What? But if you, you don't know, I haven't seen it because I, I haven't seen the movie in, I don't know, years. When you have kids, you don't see the movie. But, um, right? Right. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I've heard about it. And it's all about the guy who created Facebook. What was his incentive for creating Facebook? What's that? <laughs> what was his incentive for creating Facebook? Why did he do it? Oh, Is it because he's a nice guy and he just wants everyone to get together and connect? No money, right? The guy made a fortune. I just read last week the guy donated something like a hundred million dollars to New York City schools. You hear about that? Yeah. I would like to donate a hundred million dollars to anything. This guy did Facebook. He created Facebook because he has the incentive for money. But in the same, in the communist economy, where's your incentive? You create Facebook and you still get paid the same amount as someone else. So does Facebook get created there? Maybe, but maybe not. Okay, here's what I want to do now. I'm going to put a dog line down, you know. On the right, these economies are mostly capitalist. Capitalist means mostly private control instead of public control. 